Bonjour Séverine. Bonjour. <laughs> How are you? What did you say? How you be? Good, and you? I'm great. It's sunny here, so we're enjoying it. Oh, that's beautiful. Hello, Ulrike. There you are. Hello. <laughs> and more people will join. And so we can just we can just start. Um, do you have any questions or is there anything that that came up for you um, around painting or creating or anything else? We can clear things out, you know. Yes, for me, I'm just like, you know, I'm on my bed because obviously <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. Sometimes I'm just, come on. <laughs> so I'm just doing what I can with what I have. Yes, yes, this is great. You know, like, like the greatest art was created in these, in these crazy times, you know, when, when you read about... Um, there's, there's great examples. Uh, if you are familiar with Emil Nolde, he was um, an expressionist painter in Germany and he was one of those whose art was, had been forbidden by the Nazis as um, forbidden art. You know, there was a whole bunch of artists that could not work anymore back then. They couldn't, they were not allowed to paint. They were not allowed to exhibit. So what he did, and there's actually a beautiful book that I, that I came across where, um, and his wife documented all this. We, artists usually are not good about documenting what they are doing. <laughs> so she documented the palette he used, the paints he used, and he created a series of small watercolor paintings because he could not even buy art supplies anymore. And so he had like Indian, Indian um, paper and he created these small paintings because he had to create like as artists, you know, we, we need to create. And so he, they were hiding in their home. I think it was somewhere by the Baltic Sea. And so there, they were tucked away and he kept painting and he used all kinds of whatever materials he could find, paper, mache, um, cardboard or whatever. And, and so, you know, right now, what, what can we create with what we have around? You know, I tell people to like find cardboard and turn it around or cereal boxes, turn them around and create collages. You might have magazine, magazine uh, um, news, not newspapers, but um, magazines at home, like cut out images and make collages. There's, and then take pictures of it and blur them up. I don't know if you have any photo editing software, like how lucky are we today? Poor Emil Nolde, he did not have all these. <laughs> back then but we have all the stuff right and if you don't have glitter paint find some glitter in some cereal wrappers or whatever like right that where where we really use what we have and you might find out that you have way more than you ever imagined <laughs> yeah i was wondering what if new colors could be created? Like something <laughs> beyond what we can imagine. And we're just, oh. Yeah, oh. it's so funny, Severine, that you said that. For years, I've been asking, what other colors are there? Because it's all definitions, right? We have defined yeah. this is red and this is blue and this is yellow. And then, you know, thanks to fashion industry, we have like now definitions such as teal <laughs> or, or, you know, chartreuse, all these other colors. And yet they all are definitions. We give them a name. But what is, what is nameless that is around you and with you that you can create with? And what if we don't go to defining it? What if there are beings, molecules, um, entities, and um, sort of 
creations that are around you and asking you and begging you to create them and to create with them. Like you might all have heard that like everything that we can sort of, everything that we can define or give a name to or whatever, and certainly everything that we bring onto canvas or that we sculpt, whatever, or we write is an entity. It's, it's a being that is creating with us. So what is there around you and with you that would like to play with you? <laughs> <laughs> like tickling you, hey, I'm here. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, so I, I know this place. I literally have conversations with my paintings. Sometimes <laughs> they also invite me to step up. Um, I have one silk painting, like big, big, like the one that is leaning against the window back there. And so I, I always paint not knowing what is going to show up. And so this thing was showing up in, at first I, I could tell it's like a tree, but then it, it shaped into a dragon and I could not keep like squeeze it into an oblong shape. It was like, gosh, I was like fighting it. Right. And <laughs> it was at 2 AM in the morning. I was here in this room actually. And I said to this thing, you know what, if you don't cooperate with me, I cut you into little scarves. <laughs> <laughs> and that whole thing went, no, <laughs> and so then all of a sudden like with the stepping up like also making a choice right and making a demand which is a choice that whole creation became malleable for me and I could then bring it to into the world with total ease and so like what can you all demand of yourself and choose really choose now that you had not been willing to choose and be up until now mm. and everything that doesn't allow that will you please uncreate and destroy it yes. like a great question to ask is what can i be today that i have not been willing to be that if i would choose to be it will create the reality I know is possible. Yes. Well, I saw your paintings that you have lined up behind you. Ah, uh, yeah, the little ones are from, uh, from uh, our time together. This, yeah, these, and then this one I did, uh, well, I have it in the other room, one moment, I get the other one. Yes. <laughs> we have a private expo for us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So your silk painting, there are just oblong ones. So it's like, it seems like, I don't remember the silk painting technique. I love it. Um, it's like, it was in the image that I'm having, it's like, like embroiders. You have to put it really tight, uh, flat to paint on it. Is that the case? You have to stretch it, yes. And, okay. and um, as the paint is um, liquid, you know, and, and with <coughs> the silk, it's really running. It, it functions very much like watercolor and then it is still different, but you need to stretch the fabric um, and then paint it flat. So like right now I have it stand up. I could do some painting, but now I also get too much light from behind. So it's not like a light while I'm painting. I like the light to come from on top. I will, I will see better and um, also like be, be able to see more what is showing up because these also I create out of the blue and there's a whole part down below that, that you cannot see right now, but no, I don't just have oblong shapes. I have like any shapes. Some are like square or big, or I also have scarf sizes. And then I have square scarves and I hand hem them, which is not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so any, any shapes um, and any size silk that I can come 
uh, across right now with, uh, with China, it's all really interesting as far as art supplies go. So luckily I had bought a bunch, but prices are going up like crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so your, your silk were coming from uh, China exclusively? Well, a lot of silk comes from China. I have one supplier, they also bring in silk from Thailand, but then still it's also Thailand. It's all like, it's not, um, you know, um, I always, there's India as well. That, yeah, we're thinking so about I'm that. always looking for sources and there might be some, I know LMS is producing, they are making their scarves in Lyon and I tried to find out how they make them. It's like I went into LMS, it's like, hmm, I wonder, like, how do you make those, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course they won't tell you. <laughs> She just looked at me. Well, it's in Lyon. I said, oh, can I go there? <laughs> can you show me your secrets, please? But so what I'm saying is there might be some silk makers in, in France, but they also might have imported a lot from, from Asia, you know. And huh, so I'm wondering what would it take for new creators and, and makers of silk? Uh, everywhere where it's asked for i know mm. right mm. silk is a fascinating very fascinating material it's like the silk route the silk paths on the planet it's beautiful you know and so mm. in i have heard that in india there are families it's like persian rugs they fascinate me too you know um <laughs> in india there are families they make their own silks it's their own like family ways of me and of doing them it's it's like it's really beautiful and and each silk feels so different so i'm actually it's funny i'm a silk hunter <laughs> i go to to secondhand stores or you know in in costa rica they have fantastic ropa americana they call them and so there i'm going and i'm really looking for silks and i found some fabulous pieces and then they are like a dollar or two dollars at most and and then it's like wow now it's creation time what what can i create with these and it's with with everything and so sometimes it's really good to look around what you have again what you have in your home right now what if you don't have to buy very expensive art supplies but you work with what you have and that can be for everything in your life. You know, we usually don't look at what we have, but we focus on what we don't have. And then we beat ourselves up for not having it. And then judging ourselves for, I cannot buy this, blah, blah, blah. But we never look at what is in these boxes, actually. You know, what do I have there? What supplies are there? What money is there? What, you know, <laughs> so funny. I find $1 bills or $10 bills, like, like tucked away in pockets and what if everything is there and even now during these times what if we truly have everything in our toolbox the thing is we have to use the <laughs> the tool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what if it's tr hidden treasures like you know so is it time to to unhide them or something Oh. <laughs> you sometimes you know it's like i'm just <laughs> i know it's here <laughs> so how many treasures have you hidden in all these lifetimes for the future when you will need it and then you hid them so well that you cannot find them and how many entities have you hired entities and demons have you hired to make sure you will not find them <laughs> And so everything mm. that is, everything you created there, whatever that is, are you willing to now give it up and allow these treasures to come to you now? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what the scroll, remember? Yes, last, last week, last time we met, there was this scroll on my, my, my drawing and it was because he's always hiding nuts and things and then he forgot where there is. <laughs> they do this and you know at the same time then thanks to that capacity they plant trees 
because the 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 nuts that they forget grow into into future forests so everywhere you have how many seeds have you planted that have now grown into full-fledged trees and gardens of wealth that you have never acknowledged mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my solar plexus and, oh, okay. <laughs> and everything that is can we now please uncreate and destroy it yeah yeah there is this whole piece of acknowledging us you know and acknowledging our creations so what what creations and amazing energies and spaces and literally things and parts of your life and in your life have you never acknowledged that you have created that if you would acknowledge them now even bigger than ever before would allow you to receive them <laughs> oh my god wow 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 cool Ulrike show us your painting oh it's very small it's small oh yeah this is beautiful <laughs> that was last time when we you know we met I like yeah. the colors. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it's very, it's just very sweet, you know? Yeah. I had a lot of joy and I'm thinking, well, am I going to do a few more or not? I mean, well, I mean, I prepared these. I'm also looking what I have. I don't, I'm not a painter. So, I mean, I just say, um, it just gives me, uh, I don't know, this is so helpful for me. I mean, I don't know if this is too wild underneath. I'm not, let's see. What did you just say? You don't know whether this is too wild? Yeah, when I put, uh, uh, yeah, when I put uh, something like that on top, you know, I mean, it will be, it will be um, uh, uh, covered. What do you mean by it's too wild? Uh, too much. Now, probably it's okay because it will, it will only show corners, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we'll see. No, no, not really too wide. I like that kind of brush stroke. Yeah, and just go for it, you know. It's like, <clears throat> how many more can you create? What if instead you just put all these small paintings next to each other and you just go overboard? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't allow that and everything that brings up <laughs> this just came out of my mouth are you willing to go like overboard into the ocean of creation that is wild and untamed and you don't know what's going to show up but you just keep doing it just because <laughs> you know it's so funny there is um like i'm never really like i never really painted a series and people like it's like yeah <laughs> right like it's it but it's just a choice thing and then um i don't know was that in february or so i started painting some some flower paintings that were different and i just you know i just started this thing and it was so different and i thought oh I, i'm gonna paint more of those you know and i still had some canvases here and so i went for it and oh i paint a third one and i'm like really you want to paint a third one that is just the the same way of painting the flowers i'm like oh sure and why not and it's yeah. like why not as long as the energy is there and the energy is flowing just go for it like all the points of view about you have about how many of the same you can and should and shouldn't create while you forget that not one of them is the same as the other, yet they were created in the same sort of space and energy. So everywhere you don't allow that and, and have the tendency to judge that out of your creation space, will you please uncreate and destroy it? Yeah. It's all points of view, like keep painting. And if you paint like, Seriously, if you paint the same, I just look at this one sunflower painting there. If, if I would endeavor now to paint this painting again, it would never be the same. That's true. The true and only reproduction is taking a picture and printing it 
and then yet still the print will be different also. Mm. Then you can embellish the print and sell every single one of your prints as an original something, which a lot of artists do. So it's, it's really all points of view. So what I encourage you to is the joy of it. Who cares how many of them you paint? It, <laughs> you know, you might find yourself in a future exhibition or people might ask you, hey, can we exhibit this series? And it's like, it's a series. And it's like, huh, now I have a series of paintings and I wanted to judge that out of existence. It's like, keep creating what is, what is joy for you. Experiment and explore. What, what still can flow out of that, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the expo of, uh, you know, do you know the light expos of Monet or Klimt that are in lights? Mm -hmm. So you are going yeah. inside a space and they are projected on the wall, but yeah. the giant ones. Oh. So yeah. when we are going in it, it's like we are going inside of, it, of them. And mm -hmm. it's like a total world. So yeah. I was imagining if all your creation were, they appear to be the same, but if they are a lot in the same space, what do they create as an experiment? Like, mm -hmm. would it be like being bathed in, in a specific energy? Yes, that you require? Like, like a symphony. <laughs> yeah, a that symphony. would be awesome. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, cool. So I go to my table now. You can keep asking questions. I'm going to start. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like to talk about now or undo or? creating <laughs> thank you so much Bye. Yeah, thank you, Bettina